Welcome to ICDB 2022 Special. This is a special broadcast to commemorate the International Children's Day of Broadcasting 2022. My name is Grace Bankole, and with me on the program we have Laura Anthony, Benga Obasola, and Kayla Kato. We are so happy to have you join us. On this edition of the ICDB Special, we will be discussing the topic the Nigerian girl child and the need for equality. The Nigerian girl child has been at the receiving end of inequality for decades. She has been denied quality, education, protection, and participation. In some cultures and religions, she doesn't have a voice, not even at home. Some are forced to participate in harmful traditional practices, such as early marriage and female genital mutilation, amongst others. The UN Women, an entity of the United Nations, was established to promote gender equality and empowerment of women. The agency has been working tirelessly with the Nigerian government through several federal and state ministries to achieve its mandate. In September 2014, UN Women launched the He for She campaign as a global effort to engage men and boys in removing the social and cultural barriers that prevent women and girls from achieving their potential. And thus, together, positively reshaping the society. I deserve an education. I deserve to be protected. I deserve to be included in decision making. I deserve to lead. I deserve a seat at the table. I also am human. Promote gender equality today and violence against women and girls. This message is brought to you by Playback Nigeria and AIT. In 2020, UN Women launched a Generation Equality Campaign. Today on the program we have with us the UN Women Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Ms. Comfort Lamti. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you all very much and it's such a pleasure to join you all today. Thank you. Thank you. In your opinion, what is the state of the girl child in Nigeria? That's a very important question. I believe that the answer to that question is both positive, because it's, it's hopeful. Uh, at the same time, there's a, a lot of concern about the status of the girl child. You know, 20, uh, 25 years ago, or 26 years now, when um, the world converged in Beijing, China, to have the first, fourth World Conference on Women, the Beijing conference, uh, they adopted the 12 areas of priority rather, and one of the 12 areas was the girl child. And so since um, that period in 1995 till now, we have assessed how far countries all over the world, including Nigeria, have come in promoting the rights of the girl child. So we, we worked with the Ministry of Women's Affairs to do that report in 2020 on the 25th anniversary. And what we found is that more girls are in school now than they were then. So that's uh, an area, an element of progress. More girls are going through primary education. But as you go further up the education ladder, you see that many of the girls uh, drop off. So in Nigeria now, we only have about 10% of those in tertiary education, for instance, are girls. And less than 50% of girls in Nigeria, in the northern Nigeria, both northeast and northwest, make it through primary school. So that's where the, there is a, a cause for concern. But another point of hope is that there are so many young people in Nigeria. 45% of Nigeria's population are under 15. That means that girls make up over 22% of, of, of that population, if, you, if we take it that boys and girls are equal number. And that's a, a huge uh, uh, source of hope, because if we can invest in this uh, very large population of, of girl child, we can make sure that Nigeria's development going forward is bright. So we have still a lot of work to do. There's been some work done, but there's still a lot to do to ensure that we can empower the girl child. And in UN Women, we believe that empowering women 
starts with the girl child. So if we empower girls, we're going to have very empowered women to lead Nigeria into prosperity in future. One in three of us will experience violence before the age of 15. One in three of us will be married off as a child. One in three of us will experience the mental health consequence of gender-based violence. You can put an end to it. Protect women and girls. End violence against women and girls. This message is brought to you by Playback Nigeria and AIT. What are the present statistics of gender inequality and how are you addressing them? There are, there are some, there's some data. Data and statistics is one area that we still need to continue to improve on. Oftentimes, you know, when we are collecting data and statistics on issues, we'll say, oh, there were 100 people. But those 100 people, how many were men and how many were women? That is the first step we have to cross to know how women are impacted or girls are impacted in every single area of development. We must make sure that when we give statistics, we break it down by sex to know how many women and how many men are benefiting from anything. What we have data on, for instance, when you take data on representation of women in politics, Okay, women who are elected to office, political office. INEC has the Independent National Electoral Commission does that when we have elections. So in Nigeria, we only have 4% uh, of those who are elected to the national and state assemblies are women. That's, that's quite serious, isn't it? Yes. Only 4%. So it means that 96% of people representing Nigeria are men and only 4% are women. So that's a cause for concern. When we look at the issue, for instance, of gender-based violence, we also have data that suggests that 30% of women between the ages of 15 to 49 have at one point or other in their life been victims of gender-based violence. So that is also a cause for concern. And then you come to the economy and you find that uh, quite a large proportion of uh, people in the informal sector, which employs most Nigerians, are women. But oftentimes they are not, they don't have access to a lot of protections uh, uh, in the job market. In the area of agriculture, for instance, over 60% of the agricultural labor force are women, but many of them are in subsistence uh, agriculture. So again, their um, ability to grow wealth is limited. So the statistics that we have point to the need for us to do more to empower girls and then eventually women in society. Uh, in the private sector, that's where we have a little bit of good news. Uh, we have more women on boards in, 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 in the private sector, between 20 to 25 percent of uh, people on boards of companies are women. So that is encouraging. But there's a lot of work to do in terms of supporting women to participate fully in development. If the statistics uh, I just shared with you is what we're going by that we have a lot of work to do still. Ma, what has been the major challenge your organization faced in achieving gender equality? So you know, working for gender equality is about change, right? It's about not accepting things the way they are. It's about saying that we want to change society so that men and women can have equal opportunities, equal rights, uh, to be able to develop their full potential. And we know that in life, oftentimes, change doesn't come easy to people. So the first thing we have to change is your mindset. How do you see men and how do you see women? So changing mindsets is not easy. Sometimes we, we uh, have uh, 
opinions about women and men which are based on what we will say culture or tradition well in my tradition a woman cannot be a chief or in my tradition a woman cannot go to this place and so on so culture culture and, tr and uh, cultural norms sometimes uh, do not assist in uh, when where they are not in favor of women having equal opportunities can sometimes be a hindrance to progress. So we have a lot of cultural values and norms which are great. I think we all uh, are proud of our culture, where we come from and our traditions, and that's good. Uh, I think whilst we're trying to create a better world, a more equal society, we must also continue to um, interrogate, question those norms that may um, unintentionally be creating uh, uh, challenges for women to realize their full potential. So really working with men and, uh, and, and sometimes women themselves to be able to make some of our values and norms uh, more progressive is, is definitely uh, one of the areas where we have a challenge. And oftentimes we also have challenges where there isn't um, what we call political will you know so leaders may have we, we, we may have laws in place but there is no will on the part of those in leadership to actually implement those laws to favor girls or women mm -hmm. so we also have a challenge in always advocating always trying to uh, uh, promote uh, leadership that can help women and girls to realize their full rights. So political will is also another. And then the third is funding. Sometimes um, it's more difficult to mobilize funds to support activities that will promote women's rights. And so we have uh, challenges always in convincing uh, uh, governments, partners to put money in, in, in uh, promoting women, not just in education, but in politics and economy and so on. We'll go for a short break as we show you a spoken word presentation titled I Am Generation Equality by Abimbala Adeleke. The program continues when we return. I Am Generation Equality. At forge, we're going to play ball with the boys running for the future like he belongs to me. At 12, I should get the best score in school. I'll be nominated as a head prefect, not as an assistant. At 16, I should be allowed into the uni studying engineering just like the boys, not to be married off as a norm. At 20, I should be the head of student union, not because I know anyone, but because I am qualified. At 25, I should be allowed into politics, not as a woman leader, but as an actual candidate. At 30, I should have a seat in the parliament and make laws for women with other women. At 40, I should chair board meetings, religious meetings, political meetings, and be at the helm of affairs. I should rule the world at 50. Be treated with highest esteem at 60. Look back at 70 and see how the world has treated me graciously to be celebrated at 80. I am a generation where all girls and women are equal. It's been 25 years since the age Realize rights. I am generation equality. Welcome back. This is still the ICDB special, and our guest is the UN Women Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS. Ma, a few years ago, you launched the He for She campaign. What are the achievements of that campaign, and how do you hope to go further? Thank you. That's a great question. So, the He for She campaign was launched because we believe uh, as UN women that if we are going to promote gender equality, uh, we need to ensure that both men and women are involved in this process. Because if we have a, a society that is gender equal, it will benefit both. And we work and we continue to work to support women and women's and girls and their rights and that's our primary focus but at the same time we are also working to build partnership with men so the he for she 
uh, campaign is really an effort to try to bring more men to support women and to support the uh, work on gender equality. It has been launched nationally, as you said, and then we are launching it across different states in Nigeria. And the state-level launches are not just uh, intended to end there as a launch. But once we launch it, we also have expectations for the men. We, during the launch, we do try to recognize some of the men in the communities who are doing work to advance women and the rights of women and girls. And at the same time, we also work to get commitments from state authorities, from traditional leaders, you know, from young people about what they will do to promote uh, the rights of women and girls. And so the commitments are what we then use to follow up. We have he for she clubs that have been launched in uh, some of the states so far. We also have launched he for she in a couple of universities in Abuja. So we're trying to get young people to also be part of the he for she. And it's a movement. And we, whenever we also have programs um, uh, or, or projects that have to do with other things like women in politics or women's economic empowerment and so on, we always go back to these he for she champions and try to engage them to support all the work we're doing in other areas as well. So it's an active campaign. Uh, I believe next week we're going to launch it in Edo State and we hope to be launching it in some a few more states in, during the course of this year. Um, what is the role of boys and girls towards achieving gender equality? Well, I believe that if boys and girls are the future of this country and of this continent, then you all have a very strong responsibility to support that. Uh, as I was saying earlier, promoting gender equality is about bringing change. And so you are going to be the custodians of what Nigeria will be like 20 years from now. 20 years from now, you will all be the leaders mm, driving change and progress. So it is very important that whilst you are still young, whilst you're still learning, you also take on board the values of equal rights, of equality, between women and men so that once you are adults and once you are in positions of leadership and authority, you can make decisions that will favor everyone. Um, and I think that if you do that, you'll be creating a Nigeria where there'll be more success, more prosperity, and, and, and equal opportunities for everyone boys and girls, as well as uh, older persons, persons with disabilities. You have a more inclusive country, and I think the country will be stronger then. Ma, if you would pass a message to the Nigerian children, what would that be? The message for you is that in every way possible, you have everything it takes to make this country great. To grab it work together, work together as, as boys and girls. See yourselves as partners of progress. See yourselves as the people who are going to shape this country. Uh, my appeal is that all the girls, have, all of you should support each other and support each other in being confident about what you can contribute and work in partnership with the boys and for the boys, I also uh, appeal to you, my message is, you must see the, 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 the girls as your partners, not your competitors, your partners, and you must work together because when the girls are fully empowered, you yourselves are also better off. Thank you so much, Ma, for coming to speak with us, despite your busy schedule. We do not take it for granted, Ma. Thank you so much. It's been and a pleasure. And that is all we have today on this edition of the ICDB Special. To know more about the work UN Women does in Nigeria and globally for women and girls, kindly visit www.unwomen.org.
Remember to follow us on social media at Playback Nigeria on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And check out the wonderful work we do using the theater to promote equality at www.playbacknigeria.com. I am Gloria Santini from Whitecourt International School. I am Bengal Bachelor from Improve for Kids. I am Kayla Kato from Dambo International School. And I am Grace Bankole from Banky's Private School. Do have a great day.